concrete structure life is very long. So when Krakowka, after 10 years, after 15 years, we have to know so the fun how to solve the time. Of course, the cracking is can solve. This is just a structural problem, but the time is difficult to simulate. And this is a uh, result of the relationship corrosion among surface crack wheels. But reason at this side, uh, from this point. And this is a uh, uh, cracking pattern at first stage, like this. And the final stage is uh, like this. And the cracking pattern, is a, I, I believe, uh, is similar with the test result. And uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, local corrosion of river. The merit of this, this method can, when we con consider the Faraday's law, we can calculate the deduction of the corrosion area and the deduction of the area of the uh, river. So, well, of course, some location is different, but the similar results we can observe. So, using this method, we can simulate the deduction of the river cross section. This point is a very important for uh, deterioration stage. What is the problem of the corrosion to concrete structures? Of course, the crack is a problem, but most important problem is the after the corrosion, the mechanical performance of river reinforcement is deteriorate, and yield strength deteriorate, and the extension abilities deteriorate. Uh, becomes short, small, and collapse, and su suddenly fail, fail occur. So we would like to simulate the deterioration stage. So this result, using this result, we can simulate deterioration stage and the deterioration process of the river directly. This is an important point. I think the important point of this method. So as a conclusion, uh, well, there are other many conclusions, but uh, please keep the durability mechanics. So now we show the combination of the uh, several uh, physical model and several material model and structural model. And the, in future, we have to consider a past stage, some research studies, only one part. But in future, we have to combine each information. This is a work for your next students, next students and next researchers. So in order to simulate life cycle of concrete structures, we should unify each information with a cooperation of material and structural response. So you have to know many, many information. I only study in University studies on the structure, but uh, you have to study the chemical, electric, structure, material, etc., etc. It's it's a hard work. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I believe maybe uh, we have a uh, some couple of questions from the floor. Hi, uh, I'm Tanjawat from Chulalongkorn University. I was uh, very interested in your presentation. Um, I, I was wondering if uh, for concrete with a high level of damage, uh, there may be some problems of spalling or falling off of concrete. Can your uh, model be able to simulate something like that? Yes, I can. Uh, 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 this model can simulate. And so, after I, I, I can show the, <laughs> the result because uh, this method can, can simulate the uh, internal crack behavior directly, and the, it is easy to simulate the collapse behavior because this is just a uh, network of the springs. So, if we cut the network of springs, 
considering some conditions, spoiling behavior occur in the computer, in the simulation. Okay? And uh, once it occurred, and how do you treat uh, the concrete that, that has spoiled off? Yes, uh, so the, this is a, just a computational mechanics field. So we, we consider uh, in iteration process, we consider the sum to reduce the error and we, we cut the uh, connection. And uh, do you know the DEM? DEM? Uh, uh, the, uh, after this situation, we use the uh, uh, equation of motion. This is a statical problem, but the, we combine in the equation of motion. Based on the equation, motion, equation of motion, we can simulate the separation and the failure, collapse behavior. This is the key point. How to treat the collapse behavior and spoiling behavior. Our next speaker, uh, he is also the full professor, came from uh, Waseda University. Uh, his topic today is the life cycle, reliability, estimation of concrete bridges in the marine environment with updating information. Okay. Professor uh, Akiyama, Mr. Yoshi, uh, he, he got uh, his bachelor, master, and a PhD from uh, Tohoku University, Japan. His research ex experience is uh, he doing the field of uh, safety and reliability in concrete engineering, earthquake engineering, seismic design of high strength concrete structures, and deterioration of modeling of material and structures. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I am uh, Mitsuyoshi Akiyama from uh, Waseda University, uh, Tokyo, Japan. Today, I would like to talk about uh, life cycle reliability estimation of uh, concrete bridges in a marine environment with uh, updating. So, but uh, uh, before starting my presentation, so let me talk about uh, the lessons from the 2011 Great East Japan earthquake. So uh, from our damage investigations, uh, we understood uh, uh, that to ensure the life cycle safety of structures, it is uh, very important to consider the effect of uh, uh, multiple hazard, including uh, seismic and tsunami hazard and hazard associated with uh, environmental stressors. So I know uh, Thailand is uh, not located in uh, earthquake-prone regions, but uh, I believe uh, uh, th this uh, lessons uh, could provide some uh, useful information for you. So uh, reliability uh, safety of uh, bridges located near coastline in Japan uh, has to be estimated, taking into consideration seismic hazard, tsunami hazard, hazard associated with uh, environmental stressors. So I took uh, this picture after the 2011 Great, Great East Japan earthquake. So you can see uh, ties were corroded and the longitudinal river were ruptured like this. <coughs> and some steel bearings were severely deteriorated due to chloride induced corrosion and due to the strong ground motions. So you can see uh, end of a uh, lower truss brace with the uh, gasset plate was completely disconnected due to corrosion at uh, this location. So a large torsion response of uh, the truss bridge uh, due to the deterioration of uh, torsional rigidity uh, resulted in extensive uh, rupture and buckling of upper and lower braces uh, uh, like this.
Most of the bridges with the elastomeric bearings performed very well during the 2011 Great East Japan earthquake. However, several elastomeric bearings were ruptured, as shown in these pictures. So even though the cause of rupture of elastomeric bearings is still under investigations, so some researchers pointed out that the material deterioration of rubber caused these ruptures. So in the case where multiple hazards including seismic and tsunami hazard and hazard associated with material deterioration and structural damage are considered, uh, the failure probability uh, of uh, uh, structural collapse can be estimated using uh, uh, these equations. So, this equation can be applied to the risk estimation of breaches and uh, seismic and tsunami hazard and hazard associated with the environmental stressors. However, uh, further research is uh, needed to investigate uh, the possible failure mode of breaches. <coughs> because uh, now we don't have a uh, sufficient information on possible failure mode of breaches and uh, seismic and tsunami hazard and hazard associated with environmental stressors. So I will show the video uh, taken during the uh, Great, Great East Japan earthquake. So you can see this is uh, Utasu Bridge and uh, tsunami wave load applied to superstructure of bridges. And also the impact of uh, uh, floating debris, uh, such as ships, are applied to superstructures. <clears throat> and this uh, picture shows uh, the uh, collapse of Tsutanigawa uh, bridges. So uh, you can see the tsunami-induced skewer uh, caused the loss of lateral support of uh, bridge foundation. In addition, uh, the bridge pier was, were destroyed at the cutoff of the longitudinal rivers. So it is not clear uh, whether this bridge pier was destroyed due to strong ground motion or a tsunami wave load. However, anyway, uh, the bridges uh, located near coastline in Japan need to be designed by taking into consideration the strong ground motion, tsunami load, and tsunami induced skewer. So to establish a framework for risk assessment of breaches located near coastline, it is necessary to consider, for example, the damage of breaches due to corrosion, damage due to corrosion and strong excitation before a tsunami arrived due to tsunami wave a damage due to tsunami wave and lateral, uh, loss of lateral support due to skewer and decay faction. We have to consider a uh, multiple damage process. <coughs> so now we try to establish a new design methodology to avoid uh, catastrophic damage and to ensure a prompt restoration using a risk-based and resilience-based life cycle design perspective. And uh, 
Again, so to ensure the uh, life cycle safety of concrete structures, it is uh, very important to consider the effect of uh, extremely event and uh, material deterioration. So from now, uh, my presentation focus on uh, material uh, deterioration. So this figure shows the relationship between the number of, con number of constructed road bridge and the year of construction. So you can see in Japan, we constructed so many bridges in mid-1960s to 70s without adequate knowledge on durability of concrete. So as Professor Nakamura explained, so RC uh, structures uh, deteriorate with the time if the uh, structure is uh, located in aggressive uh, environment. Corrosion is uh, initiated by chloride contaminations. So uh, corrosion initiation leads to cover cracking, cover spalling due to expansion of uh, corrosion product. So corrosion uh, cover cracking and uh, cover spalling lead to uh, accelerate the deterioration rate. So finally uh, lead to failure of service ability and uh, deterioration of uh, long term structural performance. So this figure shows uh, the relationship between steel weight loss uh, due to corrosion and time. And, uh, and uh, the relationship between structural capacity and uh, time. So this uh, uh, phase can be divided into four stages, uh, initial propagation, acceleration, and deterioration. So at the end of uh, uh, phase one, the bridge, concrete bridges has begun to corrode and phase two begins. At the end of phase two, a uh, bridge pier has uh, uh, corrosion cracking and phase three begins. So at the end of phase three, uh, the steel weight loss is larger than about 20%. So after that uh, structural capacity, including flexural strength, shear strength, and uh, displacement ductility capacity decreases seriously. So to predict the steel weight loss, uh, the relationship uh, between steel weight loss and time, or to predict structural capacity and time relation, the uh, uncertainties associated with uh, the prediction of uh, corrosion process need to be considered. So there are many kinds of uh, uncertainties associated with uh, the prediction of uh, material deterioration of uh, concrete structures. So such as uh, model uncertainty associated with uh, the attenuation law of uh, environmental stressors, construction errors, and steel corrosion rate, and so on. So because of the presence of uncertainties, uh, the time at the occurrence of corrosion and the time at the occurrence of corrosion crack are very variable. So variability associated with steel weight loss increases with the time. 
So because of the presence of uncertainties associated with the prediction 